The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Before we could ever have a discourse or learn the word of the Lord, it is emphatic in the imperative mood to be constantly filled of the spirit of Ephesians 5.18b so that the surpassing excellency of the knowledge which is found only in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ could be comprehended. The ministry what the natural mind can think it can understand is not possible if it is not by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in the spiritual realm. We do have many distortions, many diversities in the realm of the knowledge of Christ, many errors not to understand the truth properly, and thus resulting in the period of apostasies. And not only to such kind of an extension of apostasy, that the people are being blinded so much that they are never able to understand that they have been made spectacle to the angels as well. Not only to men, their doctrine may be happy with their realm of people or with their jurisdiction of their thoughts of their denominations. But when we want to compare it to the knowledge of Bible doctrine in the mirror of his word under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is quite essential for each and every believer of this church age to know and at least to realize that we are in this Alec Nicetus' new spiritual species of Christ. We do not know what are the rituals of that great Lord who has chosen only the Israelites as only the nation which he knew on this earth. And besides the nature of Israel, he doesn't know anyone set for us in Amos 5. But when that great Lord has given this rituals or about him, the revelation to us, it is a bona fide duty of this believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ not only to look down the heritage of his physical birth freedom, the first birth, even to enjoy the heritage of the spiritual freedom as well. We all look many things as we grow up physically in our country or in their country, wherever you survive, the heritage of your freedom. But to really enjoy the heritage of a freedom, either physically or spiritually, they have to be grown up. A baby cannot understand the nor value, the difference, what it is the freedom that has been given to us. Freedom without authority, anarchy. Anarchy, authority without freedom, tyranny. Exactly in the same manner, dear brother, in the spiritual realm as well, we need to have and we need to enjoy this spiritual freedom for only one purpose, and that one purpose is to surpass, and that one purpose is to look that greatness or the ability or exceedingly great thought of that great thought of the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith in the knowledge of Bible doctrine we can look what it is for us to look the excellency of the knowledge of Christ which is above all other things of this world. This world cannot comprehend, but the people in the denominations today who have been leading around, the people who are being so much blinded around, the people being not aware of the truth, nor capable of understanding the truth, nor able to comprehend the truth, has really caused us to tell again and again Without the true knowledge of Bible doctrine, dear brethren, under the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 
it is not even possible for you all to grow up one millimeter of an inch. Far less you think you have been spiritually edified by speaking in tongues or performing some miracles or doing some healings. This charismatic crowd followed by the Pentecostal movements. Never will they give time for them to understand what is the true ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Because they've already been blinded in their arrogance, they have been cognized into their lust patterns of such kind of a great realm that they will never take an instruction to correct themselves and look into the word of the Lord from the ice concept of isagogical, categorical, and exegetical expression of the word over the dispensing technique of dispensations and rightly divide the word of truth and try to understand what it is meant to say after AD 96, the last word, Amen, was been written in the Bible in the completion canon of scripture. And the only problem why they are not able to correct themselves because they love darkness rather than the truth. They hate to look upon themselves in the word of the Lord, in light of Bible doctrine and correct, and try to know what are the true depths, which Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone can teach to us when we are spirit, living in the spiritual phenomena of rebound and getting back into fellowship. And look around and follow around the imperative mood to be constantly filled of the Spirit. To constantly filled of the Spirit is the wrong translation what they find. But to be controlled of the Spirit because your soul should be either controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit who indwells in you, or it has to be controlled by the old sin nature who is constantly there to control over it. Either of the one are always there, are always available to fight for your soul. Soul is the only mediator link between both, either to the body or to the Spirit. That divine immortal soul either can cause you by believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to a daily process of growing up in Bible doctrine by examining themselves in the light of the word rather than hating light, they should hate darkness and correct their life to the path of light and look around themselves what is the personal piety of themselves and the practical holiness and get back and look upon the truth and manifest the virtue not any other thing of morality. Even an unbeliever can show forth morality. Even the one who is going to go to hell is far more superior in morally. But dear brethren, what do we have? We have the virtue. Christians have been told in Philippians 4.8, if there are any things which are pure, if there are any things which are just, if there are any things which are noble, and if you could find anything which is virtue in it, and if you can find any praise on them, think on those things. When an unbeliever can think of these standards of morality to be great by following some of his ritualistic codes, cannot a believer be perfect than him? Then what is the surpassing greatness wherewith you have been given to know the excellency of the knowledge of Christ? Where it have been given this protocol plan of God, or you have been given this completed kind of scripture of Bible doctrine in our hands. And what it is we have been told to study and to learn and to look and to understand the word of the truth. And what is this equal privilege and equal opportunity? What is this unique protocol plan of God of this church age? What is the mystery doctrine of this life? And why are we not able to understand these simple things, dear brethren? The only reason behind that why we are not able to understand is purely because we are not able to look and to really discern the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives. If it is not the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in our lives, there is not even an inch you can think of, you can learn, you can understand. Why Lord has made us these things? Why Lord has given us these things? Why Lord has called us for to the praise of His glory and His grace? Why Lord has given us these great things of all time to be understood? Because men think in the geniusness of their mind they can go for distortions. In the geniusness of their mind they can go look and try to be an apostate by thinking that they have discovered something new. Never in their life will they come to know and look and understand what it is to look upon the harmonetical principle of rightly dividing the word of truth through isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word. And how much time it will take for them to faithfully study, faithfully prepare, and to look and to understand when our Lord has told what it meant to say, the things which are noble or which are excellent. 
whatsoever things are noble. And you know what? Whenever I look back into the Roman Catholicism doctrine, they want to look around and tell this nobility or excellency in their degrees of sanctification. The third and the lowest degree of sanctification for them is vulnerableness. And what is this vulnerableness? But we are never able to comprehend these things. And you are not able to understand what you are in Christ when you have been believing in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this vulnerableness is worthy of respect or reverence because of his region of age or dignity or character or position. And this same vulnerableness has been termed out as archdeacon in the title for the Anglican Church used for a believer in Christ. And later on, the Roman Catholicism Church, this vulnerable is the title given to the persons who have attained to the three lowest of the degrees of sanctification, wherewith the other two being beautification and canonization. So, the first thing would be canonization or top degree. The second thing will be beautification, the second degree. And the third thing will be this vulnerableness, which we have been translated in the KJV as noble. And this, what is the process of second degree? Beautification. Beautification is nothing but, it is the process of determining the sanctity of a person who has died and declaring him to be among the blessed in heaven. And he is entitled to the phrase of veneration and is usually but not necessarily canonized and this is what dear brethren you and I need to understand these people of Roman Catholicism whatsoever things are noble whatsoever things are excellent in our term translated, translated as vulnerableness they want to make you beautification after looking upon your life that is a process of determining the sanctity of a person who has been died and now been declaring him to be among the blessed in the heaven. These are the people that are going to declare him that he's going to be blessed in the heaven. The quite contrary of the doctrine we can find why Martin Luther rebelled and went back to Protestantism. The Protestants of Zwingli or Calvin as well, followed by them. This sort of stupid process of their beautification or vulnerableness or archdeacon what to make themselves superiorly higher in authority over the believers this beautification what and how you are going to look upon is the process of determining the sanctity of a person who are you to tell the sanctity of a person when Lord himself has made you saint at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone who are you to sanctify him again call him that he could be a saint and the third one, or the first one, which could be called as canonization, it is to declare for a dead person a saint in the formal church procedure, which is absolutely taken in care of Roman Catholicism. So when this world is following such kind of a whatsoever things are noble, they want to follow the categorization of the believer or the bishop or deacon or archdeacon into that category of vulnerableness or beautification or canonization. When and how you will be learning to know as a believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you are a saint. And you have been called to look yourself for the work to make holy because you have been already set apart. And you have been freed from sin and you have been causing to purify because you have been already purified. And your positional sanctification will call you as a saint because you have been made binding or inviolable by the act of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ on the cross. That inviolable act which cannot be profane, which cannot be violated, Lord cannot take you back and, uh, and call you again. You are not a saint. You have been set apart, you have been sanctified, and you have been called holy. And what is the process of holy to be called? So that you can become productive of spiritual blessing. And this productive of spiritual blessing, you have been called as a saint at the moment of salvation. And that production of spiritual blessing is the protocol plan of God, followed by this unique spiritual life with the three adult stages of this spiritual realm, followed by spiritual self-esteem, and then by spiritual autonomy, and then by looking care back into spiritual maturity, dear brethren. But the Roman Catholicism people, neither they have understood the doctrine, even as such, 
the arrogant attitude of the Roman Catholicism which was existing earlier till to the 15th century. Now, even in the pulpits of the churches, in this Christendom, we do find members more arrogant than the Roman Catholicism people, dear brethren. Do you know why? They fail to correct their truth from Bible doctrine. Even the so-called Protestants with their varied head of denominations are failing to correct themselves from the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The only difference is that they have been tagged under the head of Roman Catholicism, but these have been tagged under the head of Protestantism, but they both are dingling and dancing with the same dilemma, same dilemma of not able to look and to understand the Bible truth. Same dilemma, not able to discern what it is for them to look back into the original word and come back and look according to the completion canon of scripture, the permanent spiritual gifts, and the work of a pastor teacher laid down, the, the responsibility laid down upon his shoulders in rightly dividing the word of truth. And these are the people that are very happy. These are the people that are very enjoying to such kind of a great extension, dear brethren, whether you believe it or not. Never they are capable of discerning what is right and what is wrong. Never they are capable of understanding what is right and what is wrong. Do you know why? Because they have rejected to walk and correct in lightness rather than walking in darkness. They are mutilating themselves. They are increasing sin upon sin. Neither they are following the code procedure of the Roman Catholicism Church. The least and the lowest degree for them is vulnerableness, which is noble, and Bible calls for us to search those things which are noble, which are grave, grave in the sense not where you go and bury, which are excellent. And Bible itself tells for us, when you are there to look upon those things which are pure, which are just, which are noble, which are excellent, and among them you should find if there is any virtue, if there is any praise, then only you follow those things, if not reject them. Then how much more pure you need to be for God? How much more thinking for you is been required as Alec and Ketesis, new spiritual species in Christ, under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to rightly divide the word of truth? How much time has been given for you to understand? And what is the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to shed forth his own light and to enlighten for you in the process of edification of your soul in this angelic conflict? Have you ever thought, what are you? What is your value? Why you have been called as a saint? Have you ever thought, why the bona fide gift of a pastor's teacher has been given to a male believer, so that he is the dean of the college, the college being the university, a university being the church, and every believer being a saint, they need to teach to the angels that they are professors to them, that they have learned doctrine and they have to communicate. Not just an archdeacon or some idiot clerk who calls him at the end of the life to be declared to be blessed in the heaven or some canonization to tell that he was a saint and he has been sanctified. That is what a human reasoning will come. But the divine reasoning will tell to you, you are already a saint. There is nothing that you could be called that after your death, someone should write a beautification concerning you, the process of determining whether you are eligible to go to the blessed into the heaven or not. Any believer who believes in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even if he dies carnally, take it granted, even if he dies carnally, he is there face to face standing before the Lord, because that is the promise given to Lord God the Father to his Son, that none will perish, the one who believes upon him, even God himself cannot separate you. And maybe it is a hard point for them to understand. And it will be a hard point among the denominations of the Protestants as well. Not to go easily calling me as a cult. Do you know why? This theological terms is a nonsense to them and it is a headache to such kind of a conventional believer. Because he thinks going weekly once to the church is enough. Never he will understand he is far above superior than Archdeacon if he could talk in the terms of a Roman Catholicism priesthood. If an Anglican church can call him as an Archdeacon, if a Roman Catholic church wants that to be under the degrees of beautification, degrees of sanctification under three heads, followed by veneration, and then by the beautification, and then by the canonization, Above all these three, Lord calls you, whatsoever things are noble. And even among them, you need to look if there is any virtue or if there is any praise. 
then you should think about those matters then you think dear brethren how much more superior knowledge of Christ has been required for us to look and to understand how much excellency of the knowledge in Christ we need to go and dig from the original languages of the truth and we need to edify our church we need to feed them with that information and that's why the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher like a bond slave is to rightly divide the word of truth as an unprofitable member of the human race he needs to study the word of the Lord no matter what it is though his friends are enjoying the time there he cannot have the time to enjoy nor waste because he has a time to study and please the Lord and his work is been given only to give those things which are even needful to him as a temporary sacrifice and to do that is due unto his glory and not to rob from him which is the right thing in his sight but rather to desire to fulfill his heart the desires of Lord God Almighty so that we could be called worth for the gift that has been bestowed upon us in rightly dividing the word of truth his heart desires or his heart really deserves is our work to please him as a pastor teacher dear brother getting into light what it has been hid better it would have been in some cases like the 18th century where the people were concentrating upon isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word. But now in the 21st century of the scientific phenomena wherewith they think the natural law can, nat can neutralize the spiritual law has been really made a havoc in the pulpit today in the minds of those pastors who whether they really have the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher or not we need to cross check. But these are the people who think they have the bona fide gift of a pastor and they want to come and communicate the truth and what truth they're communicating is not even a truth far less it could be a half truth and even half truths are always dangerous as half knowledge is always dangerous and we do find so many morons in the pulpit and this is a great pathetic condition to note every nick and knack fellow who comes a knuckleheaded guy to the pulpit he tells that I am a minister, I have been an all-rounder, I have been an evangelist, I have been a missionary, I have been an apostle, I have been a prophet, I have been a pastor, and I have been a teacher. You know that saying which goes, master of all Jack Afnan. He doesn't even know what specifically he wants to be in the kingdom of Christ. He doesn't even know why he is doing this ministry. He doesn't even know what is the word of dispensation when we could ask him and talk to him. And he tells, I have been sitting with the international scholars in USA and they were so great and we could have so great discussions and I have been trained over them and I am coming here to tell it to you all. And this moron finds in each and every person a demon in believers, not in unbelievers. And he tells that pastor's wife was been concerned with demon, even that pastor's wife was with there with demon, and she couldn't have a son or a daughter, and I prayed for him, and she got healed. And now they're having a happy life, and they could have a son. And they're thinking that this is a spiritual healing for them, and he has a gift of doing that. Home is kidding too. Kidding to those morons who do not know the truth, nor who have been loved to look upon the truth but not to those who are there in the Bible doctrine firmly established. What are his reasoning? What are his thoughts? Though we may not know. Because it is a shame of ignorance that you do not know the knowledge of Christ. It is a shame of ignorance. By this time you need to be the communicators of the word. But once again we need to lay down for you the foundation through the sincere milk. Why is it difficult for you all to climb to that level of maturity, dear brethren? Live off your milk? Can't you feed upon bread? Can't you go upon for strong meat? I, shall I tell you what is the reason that why you are not interested to go upon that meat level of maturity? You are not able to live back your lust patterns of thinking what you learned. And the toughest part for any believer is to unlearn what he has already learned. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Whether you want to be under the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and learn the truth, or reject the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and hate the truth. Until and unless Yahweh is our fear and our terror, our dread, you cannot really value the truth why we have been kept here in this unique dispensation of the church age. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. We are here to tell you the right path. We are here to tell you 
what is the requirement in Lord's eye that has to be eligible for you to serve him. And without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is not possible for you to please that great Lord, not to look upon the surpassing witness of Christ. And many people do not misunderstand the surpassing ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit is not speaking in tongues or doing XYZ of miracles or healings. Because those apostles or prophets or interpretation of tongues or discernment of the spirits, the temporary spiritual gifts have been taken out, seized. And there are no way that you are going to get back again. The completed canon of scripture gives us the permanent spiritual gifts. The permanent spiritual gifts which includes for us the gift of a pastor teacher which is one, not two. Because pastor and teacher are two, but it is not. The grand will a sharp rule followed by the conjunction over there which has been used is a copulative conjunction. It tells that the one person does both the work, pastor and teacher. And this, his duty is to rightly divide the word of truth and inculcate the truth. And the second one, the gift is evangelical gift. Evangelism to the unbelievers. Pastor teacher to the believers. And in fact, even the pastor has to do the work of an evangelist at the end of his sermon, as we call the plan for them to look around and to believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we have the gift of administration, the helps. Why? Because of these things to edify the church, to build up and to preach the word of the Lord so that it is the word alone that shall reign forever and forever. Those miracles or healings today, if they have been done, it will be done by the sovereignty of God directly to the person who is in need, not by a mediator so that the mediator can take the credit. Are not like this moron who tells, I can see demons in each and every person who has been having demonic possession. Of course, India is a country where it has been possessed demonically a long time. China, New Nepal, Bhutan. And from where this man sees the demon in the believers, Lord knows. Because a believer can never be possessed by a demon. He can be influenced by false doctrine, but never by demon possession, because he's been already indwelt by the Trinity. And Satan cannot even come close to touch you. Far less these morons think, until unless you speak in tongues, you are not being baptized by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that time, the activation of the Spirit will happen to you, and then you have been really baptized by the Holy Spirit. You know how worried they are? They are so worried that these Roman Catholicism people, that they are not able to comprehend what they are communicating is a sheer lot of a lie. It's a pathetic thing to note all these things, dear brethren. But it is our Lord who shall do valiantly, and he is the one who shall reign forever and forever, irrespective of such kind of morons who are coming to the pulpits to value and honor his word and to give proper reverence for him. But we who are having the qualified gift of a pastor teacher should communicate it effectively and to a point of the truth to be made inculcated to the hearers that your stay and foundation I should be grounded in Christ and not to be stuck in mud. So, dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide in the next episode of your discourse. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. You know, to be telling to Lord God the Father in the privacy of your soul that you tell that you believe in Christ is the moment yourself that you shall have this eternal life. This eternal life is an accomplished fact, and that's as simple as that, which tells to you, believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And whereas for the believers, it is very great to be controlled of the Spirit, to live in the Spirit, to be walking in the Spirit, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine by searching the Scriptures diligently. And whereas for the past teachers, which has been given for us to preach the word, Kerasothon Lagan, be prepared in season or out of season, so that Bible doctrine can have number one priority in our lives, and Bible doctrine alone can reign forever and forever. And this time out from our witnesses, wherewith you have been called, the indwelling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and above all, the witnesses being our heroes, because you have been made spectacular to the world. And if there are no heroes, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our heroes. So which way, dear brother, and you want to go, you decide, and the simple concept for you all to tell all these things is you shall know the truth of the doctrine and the doctrine shall set you free. So which way you want to go, you decide. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that thou was going to fellowship with you through the word. We thank thee for the positional sanctification work that has been done at the moment of salvation. Help us to be inculcated more in depth of this in our soul and to comprehend those things by faith perception that we have been made positionally superior than to the chief fallen angel known as Satan. And experientially, as we require our knowledge to be grown up, help us to go up to that extension wherewith you have been called to that knowledge of thinking which is of virtue and which is of praise when we surpass all those things of pure, of just, or noble, or which are true, so that, Lord, we can have that excellency of your knowledge, which could be found only through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To this extent, we pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us, for we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.